chemistry, we're moving on to a new unit, Unit 8 on kinetics. And the first lesson is on the rate law and rate expressions. So what is kinetics? Kinetics is the study of how fast a chemical reaction occurs. So basically it's speed of a chemical reaction. Similarly, kinetics can be used to see how far from reactants to products a reaction has proceeded in a particular amount of time. The proper term for how fast something happens is called rate. Rate is the change in a variable per unit of time. Chemical kinetics is interested in two rates. The molar concentration per unit time, how much that's changing, or the pressure per unit time. So this graph shows the concentration of reactants and products from the beginning of the reaction until 30 seconds. At the beginning, everything is a reactant, it's a black line, and there are no products. As the reaction proceeds for 30 seconds, most of the react reactants turn into products. So the steeper the line, the faster the concentration is changing. And that makes sense. You have more reactants in the, in the vessel, in the beaker. Uh, so there's more molecules to hit each other, to break apart, and then to reform as products. And so it's going to happen faster when there's more reactants. Once the reactants start to be consumed, used up, the reaction's going to be slower. So over to the right, both lines are a little bit flatter. They're starting to tend towards being flatter, and that's going to uh, mean the reaction is running slower. Let's look at that on the next slide. So the reaction curve is the steepest at the beginning when the concentration is greatest, and the product line is steepest at the beginning when the reaction is fastest. So the rate is fastest where the slope is steepest. So each of the horizontal lines in those red triangles represent 50 seconds. You have time down on the horizontal axis. So each horizontal red line is 50 seconds. But you see that the line there on the first triangle, the one on the left, is, is higher. It's, it, the vertical uh, length is greater. This is, by the way, a graph is measuring molar concentration that's put in the square brackets A versus time. So if you see the triangle over on the right, you see that for 50 sec in 50 seconds, the vertical line is not as long, it's shorter. That means that it, the concentration of the reactants is going down less fast or less in the 50 seconds than it was in the first 50 seconds. So the reaction is going slower. Okay, this is the product curve for 2C2H4, so you're converting from C4H6 to C2H4. So kinetics also applies to gases instead of molar concentrations. Gas pressures are placed in the on the vertical axis, but everything is exactly the same as it is with concentrations, how you measure it, how you read it. So let's do a quick review from our solutions unit. Molarity is moles of solute over liters of solution. So the molar concentration per unit time is molarity per unit time, per change in time. For example, how many moles per liter of reactant is consumed each minute? Or how many moles of, per liter of product is produced each minute? So it can be looked at on either side of the chemical equation. The rate expression for a reactant A is written negative delta A times the concentration of reactant A, so that's minus triangle delta, and the square brackets are the concentration of A per unit time. And the purpose of the negative sign is that the reactants are being consumed, they're being reduced. So the negative sign indicates the concentration of a reactant is being reduced. The reactant is being used up. The rate expression for a product B is written delta concentration of B over delta T. The expression is positive because products are being produced. Uh, the generic, uh, in the generic chemical reaction below, so let's explain what that means. That's just some compound or, or element A 
B, C, and D, capital A, capital B, capital C, capital D. The small lowercase a, b, c, d are the coefficients. So those are just what we think of as coefficients, some whole number, one, two, three, four, so forth. So generally to write a rate expression for any reaction, the reciprocal, that is you flip the number over, the coefficient over, of the coefficient is placed in front of the molar rate of change for each reactant and product. So the rate of the reactants and products can be equated. Now rates must be positive, so we're going to have to do something to be sure that happens. So there is the rate expression for this chemical reaction. So let's pick this apart. The rate of the first reactant, A, is going to be, you're going to take the reciprocal of the coefficient, A, that's just some number, 2, and you make it 1 half, for example. Um, now, you remember that the reactants are being consumed, so they're going down in, in quantity. So that's why you have negative delta A, concentration of A over delta T. In order to make that positive, that whole expression positive, you have to put a minus sign in front of 1 over A. You need the rate to be, be a positive number always. Going on to B, it's the same thing. It's negative 1 over B times the um, rate of the rate which is negative delta b over t now when you go over to the product side c and d you notice there are no negative signs that's because products are being produced their value their quantity is increasing so since that's increasing you don't need to put a minus sign in front of one over c same with one over d so just don't worry too much about why this is just kind of learn the process for figuring out these rate expressions or for writing these rate expressions so the concentration of reactants is decreasing and negative. So a negative sign must be placed in front of, uh, in front to the coefficient to make the rate positive, and that's only for the reactants. Okay, concentration of reactants. So let's take a, an actual problem. There you see the chemical equation. So write the complete rate expression for the reaction. So we're going to take the reciprocal of each coefficient and put it, if it's a, um, if it's a reactant, you're going to put a minus sign. So think about this, BrO3, the coefficient is 1, so you're going to take negative 1 over 1. Of course, you don't really have to write 1 over 1, but I'd like you to see the numbers, what's going on with the numbers there. So it's negative 1 over 1, and then negative concentration of BrO3. Now we go on to 5Br, uh, what do you do to that? negative one-fifth times the re reducing concentration of Br, the hydrogen, negative one-sixth times the reduction of concentration of hydrogen, the Br2. Now that's on the product side, so no negative signs there. So it's just one-third times the increasing concentration of Br2. And finally, same thing with water, one-third, and there you have the delta for water over delta T. Okay, so let's do a problem with this. So assume that the value of BrO3 is negative 1.5 times 10 to the negative second molar, uh, molar, molar per second. So that's the way you express concentrations, uh, rates of concentration change, molarity per second, how much the molarity is changing per second. So the complete rate expression can be reduced to just the two parts of it that you need, which is BrO3 and H2O. So we just pick those two out and leave the rest of them off to the side. We don't need them. So there you go. That came from the previous rate expression. So now you're going to take that BrO3 and you're going to substitute in the negative 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2. So there's the substitution right there. That's what you're going to do. And there it is down below. So you just change the negative BrO3 over delta T for that number. Now you just do a simple algebra step. First of all, you can just get rid of the negative signs on the left because negative, negative becomes a positive. So you're going to multiply both sides by 3 and cancel. So we do that right there. So hopefully that algebra step was not tricky for you how to do that. Because what are you trying to do? You're trying to get delta concentration of H2O over delta T by itself on one side of the equal sign. So this does that. And then you do the math. So it's going to be 3 times 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2, that's going to give you 4.5 times 10 to the minus 2. So that would be the rate that you're forming H2O when 
um, as BR, um, if BRO3 is being reduced by 1.5 times 10 to the minus 2 molar per second. The rate law is the main question, uh, equation used in kinetics. The rate law gives the relationship between the rate, that is the speed of the change in concentration or pressure, concentration, excuse me, of pressure or reactants and the products at a particular point in time. So this is called the time independent rate law and we'll get to one that's time dependent later on in another lesson. So take the following reaction, generic reaction, and the rate law would have the following form. The rate of the reaction, how fast it's happening, is equal to the K times the concentration of A raised to the X power, B raised to the Y power. So A is the molar concentration of A, B is the molar concentration of B, K is called the rate constant and it's a function mainly of temperature and the exponents X and Y are determined by experiment and you're going to see how that's done in just a moment. Note the coefficients lowercase a, b, c, and d do not play a role in the rate law for the overall reaction. So the order of a reactant is the exponent x or y on the reactant. So let's learn what that term means. A, concentration of A raised to the first power has an exponent of 1. And usually you don't write it, but I'd like you to write exponents and coefficients of 1. And this is red. The reactant is first order in A. B squared has an exponent of 2. This is red. The reactant is second order in B. The order of a reaction is the sum of the orders of the reactants. So if you took uh, A to the first and B to the second, that would add up to 3, 1 plus 2, and that's a third order reaction overall. This is a summary of how different order reactants affect a reaction. A to the 0, if the reaction is 0th order, then the concentration does not affect the rate of the reaction. So any number raised to the 0 is 1. So it doesn't matter whether the concentration of A is 1 or 10 or 100. It's still going to be 1. So that doesn't affect the rate of the reaction. A to the first, if the reaction is first order, then doubling the concentration doubles the rate of the reaction. That kind of makes sense if you have twice as many molecules hitting each other, breaking apart and forming the reaction, then the reaction is going to go twice as fast. Um, now, and these are this is the most common type of uh, reaction in nature is a first order reaction. If the reaction is second order, then doubling the concentration quadruples the rate of the reaction. So example, how is the rate of the following reaction affected by changes in the concentration of A and B? So let's just take some examples here. So we're going to just invent the numbers that everything equals 1. The K equals 1, the A equals 1, the B equals 1. Therefore, the rate will equal 1. We're not worrying about the units of measure right now. What if we double the concentration of B? Well, that's first order. It's B to the first power. So we've changed the 1 to a 2. So that means the rate has doubled. 1 times 1 squared times 2 equals 2. So doubling the concentration of a first order reactant doubles the reaction rate. Now let's double the concentration of A. Now that's the one raised to the second power. So 1 times 2 to the second power times 1 equals 4. So by doubling the concentration of a second order reactant, A is a second order reactant, you will quadruple the rate of the reaction. Doubling the concentration of a second order reactant quadruples the reaction rate. So now we're going to do an example here using this equation. So the following initial rates of reaction have been measured for the given reagent, that's another name for reactant, uh, concentrations. Now we have that kind of odd chemical equation up above and you notice the one half coefficient. We talked about in the past why sometimes coefficients can be fractions. It's not important. The coefficients have nothing to do with the process that we're going to study here. So just ignore that. So what we're saying here is we in reaction one, we ran the reaction three times. 
and we started with a look at reaction number one we started with a molar concentration of NO of 0.25 and a molar concentration of chlorine Cl2 at 1.5 what we found is that when we had those concentrations the rate of the reaction was 1.19 molar per hour now we go back and do it another time with different concentrations this time reaction 2 the concentration of NO is 0.5 and of Cl2 is 1.5 so we run that reaction and we find that the rate is 4.79 molar per hour. Finally reaction 3, 0.5 for NO, 3.0 for Cl2 and we find the rate of that reaction is 9.59 uh, molar per hour. So what we're trying to do is form this equation down below. Rate equals K times concentration of NO to the X times concentration of Cl2 to the Y. And what we're trying to figure out, what we need to do is figure out what K, X, and Y are. And once we do that, we know those values, then we can plug in different concentrations of NO and Cl2 and figure out how fast the reaction will run. So note the coefficients in front of the reactants, such as one half in front of Cl2, play no part in this process. Okay, so first, find the value of X, the exponent for NO, by isolating the change in concentration of NO and the change in rate it produces. So find two reactions where NO changes, but Cl2 is held constant, because we don't want the change in Cl2 to affect uh, what we're trying to observe, which is how does the rate of NO2, how does the concentration of NO2 affect the rate of the reaction? So when we, so find that, find two reactions where Cl2 is constant and you see that it's reactions one and two right there. So only NO is changing in concentration and so we want to see how that affects the rate. So we come down below and we make a ratio of equation one over equation two or the other way around. You can do it equation two over equation one. Which, which way you do it is up to you, but you should want the bigger number on top because look what we have for the concentration of NO. We have 0.5 over 0.25. That gives us a nice whole number of 2. If we had done it the other way around, 0.25 over 0.5, we would have ended up as a fraction for, for our um, number there. And we don't, we don't want to deal with fractions if we don't have to. Okay, now we have to do the same thing for the rate. So down below, we take the rate of equation 2. You have to do it the same one on top, same equation on top and bottom. So it's 4.79 over 1.19. That gives us approximately 4. So now what we're going to do is, uh, there we have it. Uh, we're going to equate the concentrations and rates with the exponent x. So we're going to say that place the x as the exponent above the concentration. So that's the 2 that you have over there. Uh, and determine what value will produce the rate, which is 4. So 2 to what power equals 4? 2 raised to what power? The answer is 2. 2 to the second power is 4, so x equals 2. So the equation so far is rate equals k, no raised to the second power, that's what we just uh, calculated, Cl2 raised to the y power. So the reaction is second order in no. Second, find the value of y, uh, the exponent of Cl2, by isolating a change in concentration of Cl2 and the change in the rate it produces. Same thing we just did for NO. Find two reactions where Cl2 changes and NO is held constant. So if you look at that, reactions 2 and 3, that's true. The NO stays at 0.5. The Cl2 goes from 1.5 to 3.0. Again, we could put either of those two reactions on top. We would choose to put number 3 on top because it gives us a whole number rather than a fraction. So like that, 3.0 over 1.5 equals 2. Now we do the same thing with the rates. 9.59 over 4.79 equals approximately 2. You can round that off. So now we equate the concentrations and rates with the exponent y. So 2 raised to the y power equals 2, so y equals 1. So you place the y as the exponent above the concentration, not above the rate, above the concentration, and determine what value will produce the rate right there. And that value would be 1. So that means our exponent y is going to equal 1. 
So there we have the equation rate equals K concentration of NO squared times concentration of Cl2 to the first. So the reaction is first order in Cl2. Okay, we have the following reaction so far that K times NO, the concentration of NO squared times concentration of Cl2 to the first. Now we have to compute K. So we do this by choosing one of the reactions and substituting in the concentration of rate. In other words, if we just take, we'll take, go ahead and take reaction one. We could have taken either of the other two and we'll get the same answer for K. So we're going to plug in rate 1.19 where the word rate is up above. We're going to plug in 0.25 where we see NO, concentration of NO. And we're going to plug in 1.5 where we see concentration of Cl2. So it looks like that. Now you can just solve for K. Hopefully the algebra on this is not too tough. So that you would divide both sides by 0.25 squared and by 1.5. You need to get K by itself. So they cancel out on the right and you end up with the, with the equation that you see there. And if you do the math on that, you get 12.7, 1 over molar squared times hours. Okay, and we'll explain how, you, how we got that unit of measure in just a moment. So the rate equation for the reaction is rate equals 12.7, 1 over molar squared hours times the concentration of NO2 squared times the concentration of Cl2. In other words, now you can plug in some other concentrations of NO and Cl2 and figure out what how fast the reaction will be running uh, with those concentrations. So the rate constant will have different units of measure depending on the order of the rate law. So rate is expressed as molarity per time. And we're going to use seconds in this example. It could be minutes, it could be hours. And the concentration as molarity. So look at the following rate laws with only their units of measure written. We're just going to put down the units of measure. So zeroth order. So the rate is always measured as me as molarity per second, and that's going to equal the rate constant K times whatever the order of that reaction is. It's a zeroth order reaction. Well, M to the zero always equals zero. Doesn't matter what M is. So that means that K, the units of measure for K are going to be molarity per second. Now let's look at a first order. Again, rate is always molarity per second or per unit time. Now we have K times a first order M, so M to the first power. So you're going to divide both sides by M. And what you get then is the units of measure for K is 1 over seconds. It's just basic algebra. Second order, again, rate is molarity per second equals K, some units of measure we're looking for, and a second order equation would be M squared. So we divide both sides by m squared, and what we what that makes is one of the m's on the bottom over on the left side now is going to cancel out. So you have 1 over mol molarity times seconds. Okay, If this algebra doesn't make sense to you, um, you can come ask me and I'll, I'll walk you through this. Finally, third order, we'll do one more. Molarity per second for the rate, k equals k times uh, a third order equation which is m to the third you divide both sides by m to the third and the what the m on the top and one of the m's on the bottom cancels so you end up k equals molarity squared times seconds so those are the different units of measure and they depend on what the order of the uh, equation of the rate law is so here's a summary okay so both of the units of measure for K, 0, 1, 2, 3, there's just a summary of what you saw on the last slide. Okay, and that takes care of our first lesson in kinetics on the rate law and on rate expressions.